adding a massive storm. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. This is where we left off in the last devlog. Let's get right into it. The first thing I wanted to do was to try and revamp the landscape. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> the goal is something similar to the shining speckles that you see here. It started off, well, less than perfect but there were definitely some cool effects along the way. After a bit of tinkering, I started to get this nice highlight for the sand that's not directly in the sun, and then brighter speckles for where the sun hits. This is made by using something very similar to what the water is doing here. Essentially, I am masking really bright emissive spots over the landscape. This is a bit older, but I wanted to highlight the loot collecting system. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. For the weather system, we are using the ultra dynamic sky pack that I got for. basics of the storm in, it was beginning to feel atmospheric, but it was missing something. Hmm, that sounds oddly familiar. What is it that I'm missing? Thunder and lightning? It is. It took me a while to find it, but this button allows the lightning to happen in blizzard conditions, which is what we are using for the sandstorm. And voila. Now with that done, let's take a moment to see what Kernels is up to. Welcome to Jurassic Park. So yeah, so this is currently a work in progress, uh, but I've reached a decent looking milestone that I'm happy to show off. I encountered quite a lot of problems while working on this wave looking material. The noise texture that pans across the landscape was a bit tricky to get looking right, while also ensuring that it's random and non-repeating. Through the use of a noise node and a custom wave mask, I was able to blend these two masks together to determine where the streaks will appear. But the goal was to create a material that resembles wind blowing over the sand and causing streaks to appear. Now here's hope and Momentine has been productive. He's got the important task of organizing all the spaghetti code that we created. The following Thursday, one eternity later. One of the big differences is in how we choose to print status messages. Instead of using a million print strings chained together, I have this macro that then allows us to check which status messages we want to see. Next up was to implement the transition between levels, so it's buttery smooth. but now the landscape was feeling empty. So I added in a destroyed ship that the player begins his journey in. This is the early mock-up for the beginning of the game. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. We hope that this more intense beginning gets the player invested as soon as possible. I then added some debris around. And these radio towers to lead the player and also be kinda creepy. Dang it, you left your Legos around again moment time. Anyway, yo, I'm Sam, and I do the level design. I've been working on some board to start planning the level in 2D first. 
Also, here is some reference image I grabbed for the first level. Colonels made some magical sand falling particles and began work on rocks that blend in with the terrain. And last but not least, let's add a death animation. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Give it a like and subscribe if you did. Peace.